we don't have enough capacity to treat the least amount of patients, and this is going to be very, very hard to solve. I never imagined one day I'm going to start a business. I was a researcher, I was a physicist, I mean, but this is too important. One thing I can understand is a patient are dying every single day. Why we have technology in our hand? That's just not right. My biggest inspiration for getting into nuclear medicine was really my father, who was a nuclear scientist, a nuclear physicist, and he also tragically passed away with cancer when I was 20 years old. My mom was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was in high school, so I was first inspired by my mom and her experience. In Theranostics specifically, I mean, it really goes toward those innovators and those that have laid the groundwork to where we are today. Dr. Saul Hertz um, with the first ever radioactive iodine, which can be used for both diagnosis as well as treatment. He actually started the field using iodine to make a diagnosis for the thyroid patients almost 80 years ago. I was really fascinated by this particular concept of applying uh, targeted radiation for both imaging as well as treatment. I think in this field, there's definitely several uh, great pioneers. Dr. Alavi definitely conducted the very first uh, like a clinical PET in 1976. Dr. Michael Phelps developed the very first PET scanner. And then also Dr. Fowler, who synthesized the very first FDG. Years down the line, in the late 90s, Professor Krenning from the Netherlands, who was really the key, along with uh, Professor Quekeboom, who developed the peptide receptor radionuclide therapy. They really redefined the concept of theranostics as we knew at that time with the radioactive iodine. And then with this kind of a technology, we can start to put a different kind of a therapeutic tracer together. And Dr. Richard Bond, definitely a person as a pioneer uh, to start pushing this field forward. And also Dr. Kukani, it's a privilege to have him as a colleague. It's been an incredible history because people had to take uh, lots of chances and lots of unknown, obviously dealing with radioactive substances and the, the theory that it should go where it's supposed to go and not cause harm. Uh, to individuals and to now be all the way into a disease state that impacts hundreds of thousands of new people every single year and truly millions of men walking around uh, the country each and every day. That is why it's the beginning of this new kind of boom. Now the tsunami of Theranostics has come. Molecular imaging has a unique property that it allows you to identify the molecular processes at an early stage. PET is really the best. You can actually track the journey of the radioactive targeted treatment or molecular targeted radiation therapy. We can use that information to decide how much dose we want to inject into you. And 24 hours after injection, use this cutting edge, high resolution, high sensitivity spec CT. We will know exactly if the drug get into tumor and how much dose get into each tumor. And we can create a very precise dosimetry map so we can offer the great uh, accurate uh, uh, prediction about the prognosis. The advantage of Theranostics approach for treatment is that you can get very precise. We can see what we are treating and we can treat what we are seeing. Because you are able to actually pinpoint the biodistribution of the tracer after the treatment by doing the post-therapeutic spec CD imaging and identifying the targets by the pre-therapeutic PET CD imaging. I think Theranostics will continue to evolve and what really leads to it is the identification of specific targets on either prostate cancer cells or hopefully additional other targets uh, for cancers beyond that. The tsunami is coming, the big wave is coming, and that's exactly what we are starting to see right now. This is not just for prostate cancer. This also can be impacted to the neurological disease like Alzheimer, Parkinson, PTSD, CTE, depression. It's our job to work with each other to realize this kind of hope to the patients and make this accessible to them. People in the nuclear medicine field, people in the molecular imaging field, people in the theranostic field, it's not what we believe. We know it's going to have a, a huge impact to the future of medicine.